Here are the nine best things about photography school. Let's get into it. Number nine, it's a buffet. You can try it all. Whether you're into food, fashion, scientific, still life, portraits, landscape, film, digital, video, multimedia, you can do it all. Now, if you're like most of us and you're not exactly sure what you want to do, you can explore whatever you like. Of course, at the beginning, there's the basic core classes that lay the foundation. And then as you advance, you can start to specialize in one direction or another by choosing your electives. Now, I've talked to many people who say they like to shoot still life because it's easier to control and you don't have to talk to another human being. Where are my introverts at? And then I've talked to people who say they're natural light shooters because deep down, they don't really know how to use flash. Now, of course, I'm not saying that all natural light shooters don't know how to use flash and all still life shooters are introverts. Of course not. But that was me. I'm super introverted. It's hard to kind of go out there and just talk to people randomly. Um, and also, I was intimidated by flash when I first got started. I just didn't like the point and shoots um, with the built-in flash, and I just didn't like that look. And so, of course, I just shot natural light with super primes, and I was into that look for a while. And before I went to Brooks, I actually went to a normal university and got a normal degree. And let me tell you, when I didn't know what I wanted to do, I was looking for the easiest path to graduating. Now. I'm a science and math kind of guy. I hated English, I hated history, the humanities. I hated reading, basically. I was petrified by the idea of having to read books and writing anything more than a three-page report on them. And turns out, it wasn't exactly the reading or the writing that I was afraid of. It was more of just the subject matter that didn't really interest me. So I hit these mental walls. It was just difficult to get over. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because the first college I went to, I looked at the catalog of classes and I just basically tried to find the easiest path to graduation, the path of least resistance. But when I went to Brooks and I looked at that catalog, man, I want to take every single class listed here. Just reading the descriptions, it, it, was, it was that exciting. And photo school does just that. It gives you an opportunity to try whatever you'd like. Number eight, the teachers. My teachers were the best. Maybe it was just the chill vibes of Santa Barbara, but they were chill, they were fun, and they were good. Many of them were current or previously working photographers. We had lectures on theory, of course, and then we also had practicals and labs, which brought it outside of the formal classroom setting and into more of a master and apprentice dynamic. They were there to help you succeed, and if we weren't trying, then they let us know. And also, they were extremely picky about details and presentation. It wasn't just about the final image itself. And as a consumer in the real world, you don't just buy a product, you consider the whole buying and user experience. School was all set up to make you better. And so the teacher, they set it up to make you better, not just as a photographer, but also as, as a business. Now, when I was in my previous college, there was zero excitement at the thought of going to any of my teachers for help outside of class. Nope. But when it's something you're into, like photography, that changes everything. There was something different. You connect with them more on a human level rather than a help me pass this class. It really was a more of a mentor type of dynamic rather than just a pure teacher student. And that's what really helps is when, when a teacher is really invested into your growth as a photographer. Number seven, you're there to make mistakes. Have a crazy new idea but unsure if it'll work? Inspired by something random you saw on the streets? Go try it. Yes, there's pressure to perform with teachers and peers to judge you, but you're there to make mistakes, to push yourself to find your limits. And if you never make mistakes, that just means you're comfortable and well within your abilities. But when you push beyond your boundaries and your comfort zone, that's where you start to grow. So school is a playground that allows you to take those risks in a safe environment. When your livelihood depends on your work, then you tend to take less risk. And that's what people hiring tend to do. They hire people they know or people that recommended by people they know. They don't want to take a risk because it's their reputation on the line. So the consequences tend to be bigger when your income depends on your success or failure. So school gives you that safe space and time to go experiment. Number six, you get to shoot photos. You will never shoot as much ever again. So enjoy it while it lasts. In school, we had two to four assignments every week and we shot so much. Sometimes enjoyable, sometimes not, but we got to go out and shoot a lot. Once you graduate and get spit out into the real world, you find yourself trying to pay your bills, working for other people, trying to get your own business off the ground, let alone trying to figure out which direction you wanna go, making time for your own photo shoots. It just gets really busy. 
So the next common step after graduation is to assist a photographer or go work in a studio. You stay busy because you got to pay the bills. And you realize before too long you haven't shot in a while. You haven't built up your portfolio because you're too tired from work or even socializing after work and networking. And even in those networking events, they say, oh, show me your work. And you're like, uh, here you go. And you show them your work and they're like, this is great. You have a good eye, kid. Keep it up. And then nothing. Translation, your work looks like student work, but keep on improving and maybe one day you'll get hired. But that's the problem. When you're so busy working for other people, you ignore yourself. I've met so many career assistants who find it so hard to break out of the routine and take the next steps to actually becoming a photographer. I can go more into this later, but the point is, photography school gives you that time and attention to go out and shoot assignments right away, constantly, which then helps build your skills and confidence in a much more rapid pace. Number five, peer reviews. As a photographer, particularly if you're just starting out or even if you're a seasoned veteran, you want feedback on your work. We don't live in a vacuum. Deep down, there's something in us crying for attention, for our work to be seen and appreciated. Or I guess in this day and age, to get likes. Now, as much as we wanna cry, it's not about the likes. It for sure does give us that little high. So where can you get your work reviewed? There's, of course, paid portfolio reviews that gets really pricey. A few years back, I paid about $1,000 at Photo Plus to get my portfolio review. You can check out that video in the link down below. And that gets really pricey. It's really good reviews with really well-connected people. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to pay that much, but for somebody starting out, it, it might be a little pricey. So then there are some online services that are a little cheaper, some one-on-one. -on -one. Some are kind of like a smaller version of this um, where it's not as expensive. For example, you can join a local club like APA or ASMP, but even that will cost you some money. Or if you're just starting out and you don't really want to spend money on reviews and you'd rather look to upgrade your camera gear, which is totally understandable. When you're starting out, it can you can start to justify to spend money on something tangible like like a lens or, or what have you versus something intangible like feedback. But it's something that's critical that is definitely necessary to grow as a photographer. So school provides the perfect level of quality feedback for beginners. Your teachers, of course, and then your peers who are basically around the same level as you are, learning on what to look for as well as how to critique others. And this is done with consistency over a period of years. And where else can you get that kind of attention? And let me tell you, as someone who has gone through many reviews and critiques over the years, it is a critical factor in terms of your growth. At first, you're not sure about yourself or your work, so you're hungry for feedback. And as you get critiqued, your feelings will get hurt. But over time, you start to develop a thick skin and your wisdom really does grow as you figure out what the helpful bits of feedback are and what you choose to reject as you develop into your full potential as an artist. Anyway, in school, it was a fun process. First, you get the assignment, and then you try to figure out what you want to do. Then you go out and shoot it. And then I think the best part was the anticipation of showing it to the class, showing what you did, especially when you have an exciting idea and you just try to one-up each other in a, in a very healthy way, of course. It's, it's good competition. I think there were many of us who were definitely trying to get that collective ooh reaction from the class when your image came up on screen. Sorry for all the noise. It, it gets really annoying trying to record sound in New York City. So much construction and sirens and honking and, and buses. It's just so annoying, but we're gonna have to deal with it. Okay, so uh, number four, the best bent equipment. There were many guest speakers that came through, and I remember one of them in particular, his name was Christopher Briscoe. He was the personal photographer to Michael Douglas, you know, the famous guy. Anyway, Chris Briscoe, uh, he was an amazing storyteller. He was hilarious. He shared a bunch of funny moments and also some of the more poignant stories, uh, just personal stories behind the scenes of a normal human being of Michael Douglas and his family. Anyway, I remember a student asked him, um, and being brookies that we were, um, the technical students that we were, I remember somebody asked him if he shot in RAW. And he looked around and he said, don't tell anybody this, but I shoot JPEG medium. Now, of course, that shocked us all. How could any respectable professional shoot in JPEG medium, no less? But I remember thinking it spoke to the fact that story is way more important than technical perfection. Anyway, another quote I remember him saying was, you guys are lucky. You have access to the best bent equipment in the world. Use it. 
Now what he was referring to was our equipment checkout. We were able to borrow whatever we wanted. Cameras, lenses, big and small, Leicas, medium format, film, digital, hot lights, strobes, grip gear, studios, props. It was all there for us to use and check out and rent and all for free, free. Of course it was all part of your tuition, but for those three years or less, it's free. When you have to pay each time to rent stuff, you just tend to not experiment as much. And as much as you can watch YouTube reviews on gear, there's just nothing like trying it out for yourself for an extended period of time. It also helps to have assignments or personal projects to purposely test out gear rather than going to the park and aimlessly taking pictures of leaves or brick walls. Number three, you learn a lot. I don't mean just in terms of photography. You learn the concepts, yes. But you also learn pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, pushing yourself to handle the workload consistently for three years. We all know time is money. You will not learn as much in such a short amount of time. I don't doubt that it's possible, but the far, far majority will not have the discipline to go out and learn and practice as much as you would in the same amount of time. And it is different when you go out and shoot and learn for yourself versus simply just assisting somebody and helping somebody else. Brooks was set up to simulate real world clients and those clients were your teachers. The teachers are your clients and you get paid in grades. There's a pressure with so many deadlines. You're not just working on an assignment from start to finish one at a time. There's several assignments going on at once while trying to learn the next lesson. We also had to do pre-production before the shoot and also post-production after. And post-production wasn't just retouching and exporting, but oftentimes it was also printing and finishing, as in cutting your own mats. We also had this thing called comp books, where we document everything we did for each shoot, including concepting, contact sheets, camera settings, location, results, lessons learned, and the like. Basically, it was paperwork. It was a pain, we all hated it, but it made us pay attention to detail. And that was really a sign of things to come. Because guess what? Running a freelance business requires lots of paperwork. There's contracts, receipts, taxes, pre-production, payroll, all that. And so unless you have money to pay somebody to do that, especially in the beginning where you have to bootstrap it, guess who's doing all of that work? That's right, it's you. Number two, internships and the alumni network. Internships. Now, here's where you can get real world experience of the business end. As a student, you're able to get internships for photographers and studios, and having a good network can gain you access to the best internships around. Annie Leibovitz, Mark Seliger, David LaChapelle, just to name a few. And so there's a long line of former Brookies working as studio managers, first assistants, second assistants, and not to mention our teachers had relationships with people in the industry. So naturally, they looked to Brooks for interns. And I can talk about my own experiences uh, with internships in another video. And another great thing about the network, you can hire your friends you've worked with before on your own shoots. Like I mentioned earlier, nobody wants to take a risk on an unknown if they can help it. So for me to have a big job, I want to ideally hire people I trust and have a working relationship with. And back during school, our teachers taught us to be nice to each other and help each other out because it's a small world. And you never know if your classmate will be in a position to hire you in the future. For some of the biggest jobs I've had, both locally and traveling around the world, I hired trusted classmates. And that brings us to reason number one, camaraderie. Specifically camaraderie through trials. You're surrounded by like-minded people and you will be inspired. There's a creative energy. There were long, hard, tricky assignments and you really got to learn how to work with people and you emerge on the other end closer because of it. And that goes for anything in life. Vacations, military, camp, that group project you work on together at work, or even being stuck in an elevator. So it goes without saying, it's really good to see old classmates flourish after school. When they get that big job or that shoot, you're just really excited for them. And one classmate I remember during school, he was kind of this dorky, mellow guy, but super creative. He had crazy focus and work ethic. I remember he would tell me an idea that he would have on his mind that he wanted to try out. And sure enough, the next day it would already be shot. And the day after he would already have it edited and uploaded to Vimeo. And all of these projects that he did were personal projects outside of the school assignments. And today he's one of the more successful guys working right now. His name, Michael Shane Bloom. Keep on rocking, man. Anyway, Brooks was awesome. I loved it. I wouldn't trade that experience if I were to do it again. 
But stay tuned until the next video where I talk about the worst parts of photo school. Thank you for watching till the end. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below and click subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps out the channel and oh yeah, we finally hit 4,000 hours of watch time and we're so close to the 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone again. Maybe when we hit 10,000, we can get some sound insulation possibly. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, till next time. See ya.